Welcome back. All right, so the career of Scott Gomez. Yep, career video time. Uh, a first-round draft pick back in 1998. He was drafted 27th overall by the New Jersey Devils. And being from Anchorage, Alaska, there, it, it was a good story. Scott Gomez's rise in the NHL was a good story. Uh, he plays all 82 games in the 99-2000 season, his first year in the NHL with the Devils. 19 goals, 51 assists, which is 8th in the NHL that year for 70 points. In the playoffs, 23 games, 4 goals, 6 assists, 10 points. He had a pretty good career that first year. Uh, Calder, Calder Trophy, yep, he played in the All-Star game and wins the Stanley Cup. So there you go. Uh, a couple of criteria right there for a Hall of Famer. 2000-2001, plays 76 games, 14 goals, 49 assists, 63 points. So his point total drops off a bit, but he played six less games too, so not that much of a difference in his output. And then in the playoffs, 25 games played, five goals, nine assists, 14 points. So for New Jersey, <clears throat> they win the Stanley Cup in, nine, er, in 2000, and in 2001, they lost in the final against Colorado Avalanche. Absolutely fantastic run, though. And really about as close to a dynasty as New Jersey got with the Cups in 95, 2000, and then they'd get one in 2003. But in between, you also have the 0102 season. New Jersey, uh, that year, Gomez plays 76 games for them. 10 goals, so that's a drop. 38 assists, that's a big drop. 48 points overall. So, due to injury, he ends up missing their, their playoff games. He does not make a playoff appearance. So, the following season, 0203, is a bit of a bounce back. 80 games, 13 goals, 42 assists, 55 points. But in the playoffs, 24 games, 3 goals, 9 assists, 12 points, and a Stanley Cup. So Scott Gomez, four years into his career, has two Stanley Cup rings, a Calder Trophy, and is a pretty good player. Overall, pretty good player. And 0304, his assist totals come up a bit. So he plays 80 games in 2003-2004, 14 goals, 56 assists, which leads the National Hockey League that year. 70 points overall in the playoffs. He had six assists in five games. So lots of helpers, right? So the 0405 season, he goes home, uh, he plays in the ECHL, he ends up being the MVP, he also gets hurt. <clears throat> but at any rate, all of that aside, he comes back for the 0506 season and plays all season. Now, whatever breaking his pelvis did, it sure seemed to have helped um, in that his production went up. 82 games played, 33 goals, 51 assists, 84 points. And I, I think that's the year that raised the bar too high. I, I think the expectation was, hey, you know, Gomez is really hit now. Um, in the playoffs, he adds five goals, four assists for nine points in nine games. So it's a career year, and it means that the bar now has been raised to a, a level he's not going to reach again. So 2006-2007, play 72 games, 13 goals, 47 assists, 60 points. In the playoffs, four goals, 10 assists, 14 points in, in 11 games. Now, before that season had gotten going, uh, he had been in a contract situation with the New Jersey Devils that went to an arbitrator and the arbitrator had given Gomez a one-year deal that Lou Lamorello had accepted as general manager of the New Jersey Devils and so he goes to market uh, July the 1st of 2007 and he signs July the 1st 2007 with the New York Rangers to a seven-year 51.5 million dollar contract <clears throat> so you're torn on this one right and this is one of those cases where he's a good player Scott Gomez is a good player but that contract ends up making it so that, you know, he, he's not going to live up to that contract. And so he's in a tough position. Like I've said before, I'm not going to begrudge a player for signing a contract. The GM wants to give him the money. He takes it. But Gomez never really lived up to that contract because he's not a 33-goal scorer. He had that one 33-goal season, sure. But his first year with the Rangers, his numbers aren't bad. 81 games, 16 goals, 54 assists. 70 points in the playoffs, 10 games, 4 goals, 7 assists, 11 points. He did play in the All-Star game, but again, because of the amount of money they're spending on him, now the amount of um, criticism he's going to get when he's not scoring goals or getting the points that the team wants him to, or that fans or media want him to, there's going to be more scrutiny. So the following year, his second and final year with the Rangers, 77 games, 16 goals, 42 assists, 58 points. In the playoffs, two goals, three assists, five points in seven games. So it's not working, right? The The contract hasn't worked from the beginning, and so the New York Rangers are looking to move them. The Montreal Canadiens decide to take that contract on. They have the cap space. They can take on that contract. So June the 30th, he's traded 
to the Montreal Canadiens with Michael Busto as well as Tom Pyatt in exchange for Chris Higgins, Ryan McDonough, and Pavel Valentenko. And Ryan McDonough being included in that deal uh, is a move that I think Montreal regretted pretty quickly. Now that being said, Gomez didn't play badly in Montreal either. So the first year in Montreal, 2009-2010, 78 games, 12 goals, 47 assists, 59 points. And then in the playoffs, a Montreal Canadiens team that didn't have a very good regular season, had a very good postseason, uh, scored some upsets. 19 games played by Gomez, 2 goals, 12 assists, 14 points. So in the playoffs, he's a good performer. And overall, he's a good performer. But again, it's that contract, right? That contract just sort of makes it so that people aren't going to be all that happy with the production. Well, then the production falls off. So 2010-2011, he plays 80 games, 7 goals, 31 assists, 38 points. In the playoffs, he adds 4 assists in 7 games. And he went a while in between goals. Uh, in between the 2011 and the 20, well, 2010, 2011, and 2011, 2012 season, spanning those seasons, he goes 60 games between goals. So he has 22 assists during that period. But again, because he's being paid that $51 million contract over seven years, yeah, this production doesn't work. So uh, 2011, 2012, he plays 38 games, two goals, nine assists, 11 points. That's just, that doesn't work. So <clears throat> we have the lockout going into 2012-2013. And coming out of that lockout, they get rid of the loophole where you can just send a guy down to the minors and take his entire cap hit off the books. And so Montreal suggests Gomez stay home. Just stay home. That was the suggestion to Wade Redden by the Rangers as well, was just stay home. These contracts, we, you know, just just stay home and, and we'll, we'll just ride this out. But the NHLPA steps in and says this doesn't work. So what ends up happening is they bring in the compliance buyouts. And when, as soon as the compliance buyouts are, are announced, uh, the Montreal Canadiens put him on waivers and they buy out his contract at no penalty to the team. So <clears throat> he ends up being signed January 23rd of 2013. Because uh, the 2012-2013 season was all cased in 2013 in terms of the games being played. So he signs with the Sharks. Uh, on January 23rd, he plays 39 games, 2 goals, 13 assists, 15 points. So the offense is largely gone at this point. Uh, and in the playoffs, he adds 2 assists in 7 games. That would be his final playoff appearance. So July 31st of the following summer, he signs as a free agent with the Florida Panthers. Plays 46 games that season with Florida, 2 goals, 10 assists, 12 points. He's basically a depth player at this point, right? Um, and then December 1st of 2015 or sorry, of 2014 in the 2014-2015 season, he signs with the New Jersey Devils. Now, he'd been there on a tryout, and it was it was a delay. So this year, I think it was Tyler Pitlick that was in that situation in St. Louis. Comes in on a tryout. They wanted to sign him, but it takes a while into the season, and injuries take place, and then they sign him. So after Gomez signs with New Jersey, some of that offense comes back. 58 games, 7 goals, 27 assists, 37 points. Or 34 points, sorry. Uh, so that's not bad. Considering the production the years before, that's not bad. However, New Jersey opts not to bring him back for another year. So October 7th, uh, he signs as a free agent with the St. Louis Blues. That's after a professional tryout. So uh, he ends up playing 21 games for St. Louis. One goal, seven assists, eight points. And then he ends up being released. Uh, he, he argues for his release on December 29th and he gets it. And after that, he ends up signing a tryout with the Capitals team in Hershey. And he played in Hershey for 18 games, had 24 points, but then wanted out of that as well. So that on March the 2nd, he could sign with the Ottawa Senators, which he did. And looking at this, I was like, right, I totally forgot he played for the Senators. So Gomez plays 13 games in Ottawa after that and records a single assist. So that ends up being the end of his career there. So it starts off, you know, gangbusters up here and things are great. And it really feels like him signing that contract with the Rangers just knocked everything off track for him. And then there's the just the drop off in his production that starts in 2010. So he ends up playing 1,079 career games, 181 goals, 575 assists for 756 points. In the playoffs, 149 games, 29 goals, 72 assists, 101 points. Good solid player, good passer, good instincts, decent two-way forward during his career as well. 
But in the end, uh, that contract, a lot of money. It's a lot of money. And uh, it, it felt like that's what ended up getting him sent to Montreal rather than staying with the Rangers. And then it just kind of goes off the rails from there. But still, he played almost 1,100 games in his career. Had over 750 points. That's not too shabby. So let, there you go. The career of Scott Gomez. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.